so we have options collision course uh, frankly I th I'm thinking of what I would like to do the most is to continue the kind of discussion we had yesterday where we sort of figure figure out characters figure out places and, places and uh, uh, and uh, then in during that uh, some plot points may emerge mm -hmm. oh more uh, enthusiastic about places than characters because don't want to I don't want to risk over yeah yeah because I think yesterday we we came up with pretty good notes mm -hmm. so it's like it's something oh, yeah. something to uh, something to hold on to and take into second uh, like drafting and not uh, not uh, add too much to the planning Okay, situation notes, situation notes, situation notes. Ah, here's a situation for us, uh, mm. uh, which uh, relates to the place. So, uh, if Joel is on Archaos two, no, was it was it four? Four. Four. Uh, if Joel is on Archaos four in her home city, then. Uh, uh, scribe and Nali looking her up there. So uh, Scribe and Nali will have to get to Archaos 4 and they will have to find her and uh, and this uh, this might give us uh, give us a lot of the uh, planet view where because I would I would think that they might take a very different route and and very different methods than uh, Jewel and Fortune did when traveling back in Sika. Mm. Okay. Well, that okay. So you want to work on lo location notes, but yeah. there, we've got a situation note here that says Scribe and Gnarly track down Jewel as well so they sort of overlap a little bit uh, here. yeah so uh, I, I think uh, well this one is not popular at all so we can just uh, we can just start dumping ideas and mm. uh, if we get like very specific ideas about uh, about place then we can gather them into a different uh, document but otherwise we that's what Pinterest is for we did this yesterday as well with some of the character or was it was it some of the chapter notes that became character notes as well but mm -hmm. we sort of kept them in the same in both yeah, documents yeah yeah relevant in both places so okay we can do that again yeah there there can be there can be uh, duplicates and overlaps and what have you. But let me let me open some notes. I don't want more ideas. I want to view the existing ideas. Stories collision course. Oh, I I I made the designated board. Ooh. For collision course as well. I I added the scribe and the doctor pins there. But right now it's also sort of like fluff. It's just, it's just sort of gathering imagery that helps me think. Mm -hmm. It's 
So that's that's like uh, uh, <laughs> I have uh, I, I have sort of found. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a method, it's more like, yeah, well, maybe a method. So it's like, uh, I know that people make like mood boards or character boards in Pinterest and whatever. And uh, I've noticed that when I'm in this uh, early fluff gathering phase, then I also tend to uh, pile up images, make boards, mm -hmm. make albums, but the goal is not to uh, provide visual reference or or you know uh, illustrate uh, the situation, but instead it's to sort of allow my brain brain people to sort of. <laughs> <laughs> work on this work on these connections so it's 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 like it's it's almost like a uh, it's like a buffering activity or a substitute activity that actually helps to figure out the story stuff in the back brain <laughs> mm. so it's like uh, if i take any board with with any story with it i might not be able to use it as a reference for illustration or illustrations or any of that but while I was gathering those images uh, I was co covertly thinking about or allowing my brain to think about uh, that stuff so in, in that sense the uh, the gathering is is even more important than the actual board that results mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you can take a look oh but tight but Butts are tight. <laughs> 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 so so yeah, uh, there is a designated uh, board for stories collection course, but that's not what I wanted to look at. I wanted to look at. <laughs> Right now, the imagery that's here is relate related to Sika, so it's all the lush residential terraces and and uh, Japanese gardens and uh, high-rise doodads and all that. But I'm thinking. and scribe so that's the starting point once they make it to Archaeos 4 uh, they they travel tr through it via different means mm -hmm. and uh, and via different transport and uh, and through different places so they will end up in the uh, termite hive and obviously they oh they might not even uh, they might not even go to the high rise it might be that they are able to send word or send the word out that they are looking for one miss harper and uh, the harper house support system picks up on that and alerts jewel and eclipse and uh, and basically a meeting is arranged somewhere at the bot bottom shelf of 
the city. Ooh. That would be interesting. The, s the streets! Ooh. Yeah, man. <laughs> so this this allows us to go uh, deep into the city and uh, and we might even be able to explore some of the uh, innards or like you know the the understructure mm -hmm. yeah I think that'd be cool that was a that was a region that I wanted to sort of I, okay. Uh, he's still writing. <laughs> All that jazz, man. All that uh, jazz. So if you remember back to the original, original, original Seeker, and I was like, oh, hey, maybe we should have a flashback scene mm -hmm. to Jewel on the streets. Uh, back in the day, there was going to be a sequence in Seeker that actually touched on this area but it got mm. I think it got cut in favour of Trista's stuff instead to sort of highlight Jules' uh, history. It didn't work. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, because it was a sudden flashback and it was really out of place to be honest with you. Uh, uh, it didn't we work didn't, I don't even think we wrote it down. Yeah, uh, we did use some of the uh, some of the flashback material got used in her fever dream or the, the mm. sort of uh, the Drifting between worlds and consciousness and whatnot. Which is an awesome scene, by the way. I read it again. Oh, cool, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, I think I was able to incorporate some of that spirit in in the in the dying flashback. But yeah, some of the uh, archives stuff got incorporated into into Trista uh, Trista's own duplicate which is uh, I mean it, it worked better in the end as well the um, so the, the sort of the training yard and that that she has while she's lying on the floor in the office mm -hmm. um, <coughs> they're a lot more like we do the thing where like she tries to shout and, and nothing really comes out and the whole running but her legs aren't really moving sort of thing mm -hmm. um, sort of dream sequence in the original original where she was sort of like flashback to the streets I, everything was much clearer and it mm -hmm. was like she was essentially there mm -hmm. you know uh, so I think actually I played it off more of, more as a memory instead of an yeah. experience she was going through at the time it wasn't, Sorry. yeah. It, it wasn't a flashback. It was, uh, it was just a separate chapter that was chronologically different. Mhm. Mm but the way we handled it, like, I mean, I think you started writing Trista's logs as sort of like a separate, and then ended up incorporating them into the book, and it's just, and all that just plays off really. Well. Hmm. Uh, you 
somewhat breaking up a little bit, so I I, oh I, no. I I don't know how much I can keep browsing the image because I think uh, it I'm using up the bandwidth right now. But yeah, anywho, if you open, if you also open the. Doo -doo 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 -doo, my bandwidth is also rather shaky. Oh, so I may okay. Have to, okay, so I had no. I had Pinterest open for a little bit. Um, <laughs> okay, so no funny business with uh, with the imagery. You can you can see later from the video uh, which ones uh, which ones I have. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. That's a that's a better idea because if you've actually clicked on them and brought them up big, mm -hmm. uh, that makes it easier than me just sort of sifting through the image board. Which mm -hmm. I still will do because I like the sort of inspiration it provides. <laughs> At the same time, a more directed approach is always appreciated. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, so the uh, the journey for the guys uh, through uh, through the bowels of uh, whatever the the city name is, we might have to give the city a name. Okay. <laughs> and and yes. the under city should allow us to geek out on our shadow run stuff. Mm-hmm. I will click on a few more images and then I will close Pinterest down because I think it is hogging the bandwidth. There's some um, like noises every now and then. Mm-hmm. So the keywords again are uh, multi-layered or like multi-level, mm -hmm. uh, multi-level buildings or, or multi-level structures, mm. artificial landscape that uh, takes us to great heights, uh, also great depths. So mm -hmm. the um, what was the the, the speeder ride in uh, in Sika is one reference point, and again these images uh, aren't. Uh, I'm opening one here. Uh, these images aren't uh, exactly meant as. Uh, visual reference but more like emotional reference like what what this place should feel like I think it, it was to other keywords that sort of with structures built into the side of the flat term mm -hmm. this one especially And Jewel and Fortune took a... Did they take the scenic route in the speeder and the scenic route in the garden? Or or was it just the scenic route through the garden and the route they took on the speeder was sort of more direct? No, the, the, the route on the speeder was the quote-unquote uh, scenic route. Uh, right, okay, right. Because, uh, uh, because Fortune wanted to see well, well not not exactly because he wanted to see stuff but, but basically Jewel was treating him with all the vistas and free sky and whatnot like mm -hmm. after his uh, capture but uh, the uh, the path through the gardens wasn't the scenic route but the secret route yeah so sec secret yeah, entrance yeah. secret <laughs> Okay, so the guys, they will have to land somewhere.
straight off the bat, I feel like Codex is more equipped. And I don't know why I feel this. I think maybe just because he's, he's, he has landed at a moon facility and Nali has not. I think Codex is probably better equipped for landing on surfaces. Then again, if you already Ooh. have a ship, if you have a car, the car has to be able to park whether it's a truck or a minivan. So it's like if you, uh, if you have a ship mm. that uh, where you live in and that flies from place to place, it has to have uh, a capability especially if it's a small ship like yeah okay some big ass structures might not be able to uh, come down on a surface other than uh, in extreme uh, extreme emergency but I would say smaller ships a standard feature is that it is uh, able to break through atmosphere and land. Yeah. Okay. I see, I see your point. So it's mm. like uh, I I think we uh, we can use it as a sort of selling point between the guys. Like my ship can can handle this thing better than your ship, but mm -hmm. I don't think we can uh, use it as an actual plot point. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, smaller ships would have the capability to land on planets and stuff, um, but if you've got like a really big ship, like a massive ship, which we don't really encounter all that much in the universe, um, they're more likely to send shuttles and stuff down. Yeah, like yeah, so, so, uh, so basically in order to bring a massive ship down, you have to have a damn good reason. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, but now I remember uh, that I had this thought that it might very well be that they either take each other's ships. Well, I, I mean, I each of them takes their own ship. Mm. So it's like it could be that at this point they are not yet. They have not yet formed a full alliance, but they are just sort of. Uh, well, let's meet there and see what we can find. So this is a possibility. I don't think... I think if Nali and uh, Scribe are working together, like, Nali's not just going to leave his ship in orbit, mm -hmm. um, jump on Codex and then mm -hmm. fly down to the surface. Like, theory would be well vulnerable. Um, so... Yeah, like, uh, you wouldn't just leave one ship behind. No. So, <laughs> yeah, no. so either either they have made <coughs> some arrangements uh, to uh, like I, I, either they have really 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 done some preparations to move from one ship to another, or they will indeed each uh, just take their their own ship at this point. I think that's probably the more likely option. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's Unless like during the writing of the story, something does occur at Svalbard, mm -hmm. uh, and and this changes. Mm -hmm. But this in this in this precise moment here, uh, I think they'd probably take both ships and mm -hmm. make sure they're both secure on the surface. Yeah, and uh, there is also another point. It could be that. Uh, uh, so it, it it depends on the given port structure, but uh, it is very likely that uh, they they don't bring the ships like physically on the ground, 
like uh, the the port structures are such that uh, the ships are stored uh, uh, higher in the atmosphere somewhere. Mm. So that that was that was the same with uh, uh, with Solite actually, although I I don't think I ever mentioned it. We did. I I did bring up the uh, launching or like log logistical hover pads with uh, with Wraith ship. Yeah, Ver Vergaea. But, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, Vergaea. But uh, but I don't think I fleshed out uh, how the regular commercial ports function. But my thinking was that uh, the ships are not brought like ground on the ground ground but instead they they are uh, storage like some somewhere higher mm -hmm. and then the, the people are brought down yeah to the yeah surface. exactly yeah uh in split one they i have deliberately bought the gas ram down to the surface for heavy maintenance work yeah uh, yeah so, so like if you if you have but again uh, the ground i think the the notion of ground can vary a little bit so again uh, using seeker as a reference the um, operative port or what was it uh, priority port so mm -hmm. for operative uh, operational vehicles and such uh, again it wasn't like on the ground ground but it was an artificial structure where all the maintenance stuff lay so it's like while while it while it might be on the ground uh, as far as the crew considers uh, it might not be physically on the soil but on uh, on a designated structure mm -hmm. yeah uh, and let's see, so if they have traveled here, and at the moment I'm, I'm keeping the, was it a peaceful travel or an escape, I will, I'm keeping this open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think just focus down on this situation. Yeah, and also I'm keeping it open if, uh, whether they have already tried to, uh, uh, try to visit another name in the list or not so but I, I'm going to note it down But uh, regardless whether whether they have tried to locate other people physically or not, uh, Jewel will be the last one that, that that they will try to actually track down, mm -hmm. or that that they will actually physically go to because from from then on things start uh, shit shit start catching up. Okay, so. Uh, Assuming that each has taken their own ship to uh, to a port somewhere, and they will meet. They might meet in in the port, or they might meet. Uh, uh, they might meet in uh, in the city layer somewhere. So it's like, how was your trip? Oh, don't ask or so something, something <laughs> of that sort. <laughs> so so basically, Ooh, we can do some camper van talk. Like, <laughs> when you meet up with fellow campers at another campsite, and they're like, and you're like, "How was your trip?" and they're like, "Oh my god, you don't, want to uh, be you don't want to know." <laughs> Got pulled over. Oh man, just a nightmare. So <laughs> we can do some bits and bits like that. Oh, <coughs> pulled over. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it could be. It, it could also be that they have taken slightly different routes. Uh, it is. Uh, it is certainly. Hu uh, this is where I would uh, bring in the unpredictability of transit 
transit and that uh, transit requires information processing that it is it is not a matter of propulsion is that they they might quote unquote take off or enter transit from same from same place same time but uh, uh, they're coming out of transit and uh, traveling through the system that's that's where it widely differs differs mm -hmm. so I think yeah I think possibly I, I mentioned during the course of Mira's Legion that I've got a th I've got a feeling that or personal headcanon is that some transit drivers have got the option to go from wherever they want to wherever they want um, and there's some uh, it's it's not always well it isn't ever predictable it's more of a sort of average or not an average a sort of guesstimate of how long but there are some other the ships that can only transit from certain locations to other locations really efficient I think we'd, we possibly touched on this a while ago I think so yeah I, I seem to remember this talk and again it's it's like uh, not the drive but a computer not the drive not, not the drive the computer, like a transit core yeah transit core I used in Calabasa. Yeah, and I'm explaining it really badly as well so <laughs> I apologize for that but th I was just trying to get the memory of that yeah, conversation yeah yeah so maybe that helps. So it's it's not. like uh, <laughs> there there are transit computers that are more limited, that can mm -hmm. only basically bounce between designated spots, or like ba basically they they have pre-made calculations. They don't uh, they are not able to calculate uh, uh, calculate on the go. Mm -hmm. They only have um, like pre uh, uh, pre inserted doodads, and because of that, you you might have some ships that don't take as long to start the the transit or start transit, and the ones that have got to calculate, maybe they take slightly longer. No, to, no, to get quite quite that. the opposite. No? no, 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 no. That's 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 wrong thinking. Scratch, scratch, okay. scratch all that. Uh, so again. Being able to do the calculation on the go is a good thing. That means yeah. you have more uh, more powerful transit core. That means if you are able to uh, spot uh, or, or like calcul calculate your quote unquote uh, quick travel from from one time space spot to another time space spot, it means your computer is more capable. And you it's can, hot shit. yeah, hot <laughs> shit, and and your hot shit computer can can calculate your transfer with a greater de degree of of predictability. So it's like it's it's a little bit more sure shot, but these I would I would I would think that these uh, low low tier computers or low tier cores that have to use. Uh, pre-made calculations or otherwise they will just blow up mm. uh, those even oh, though they're like so like kind of slow and sluggish and uh, well not not ag again we are not talking about speeds we are talking about computational capability yeah so uh, it's it's like uh, it's like uh, uh, a windows 3.1 machine that uh, <laughs> that will uh, that will try to boot up a game mm -hmm. from from our times. So it's it's like uh, it can o so those low tier uh, transit cores can only manage uh, pre calculated trajectories or pre pre calculated transfers, and while doing so the end result is still wildly Im unpredictable so again it's not about speed it's not about how fast you go no, there no, no. it's it's how surely you go there so it's it's the it's the weather uh, whether it takes uh, uh, so for a hot shit computer or hot shit core uh, you can say with let's say 60% of certainty that okay 
uh, I might be there in uh, in two weeks, I might be there in one, but it's it's certainly between these values. But with the low tier core it would be like, yeah, I might be there in one day, I might be there in, in 40 days, who knows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so 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 that 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 sort of uh, that sort of difference uh, it's like it's like it's like the discord connection discord call connection so some days it connects immediately and some days it takes like i don't know 10 minutes and we never know <laughs> mm. this is very true <laughs> The, the discord. Ooh! When you made the spelling error earlier of uh, the jewel did in sequel, <laughs> I was like, collision course is a sequel. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> but the moment passed, so it was like, uh, and you were tired a bit away, and I was like, <laughs> but yeah, I got the chance to make it. I'm pretty mm. pleased now. Um, but yes, oh, in man. in in any case, the sort of uh, the sort of uh, central situation here, or the, the central moment for the situation here, is other characters interacting with uh, uh, with Archaeus and its landscape and its cities and its transportation. And and it should contrast, or it should be wildly different than the uh, speeder ride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. so how do we know any specifics yet? Like, do we know how they send uh, a word out, or uh, um, no? What sort of I, I, using? I, I Just I leave think, it open ended for now. Yeah, I think it's all open ended. Like. Uh, I would want to bring in uh, the street squad, so because despite uh, despite Joel's hopeless uh, shitty leadership, the uh, the sort of support structure supports itself. So it's like mm -hmm. what the way she's trying to run the things up in the house, and and failing at that that uh, that's like one contained situation but at the same time the uh, the street runners and the smugglers and the shady trade houses and the more public trade houses and transportations and repair houses and what have you those keep living their own life so there might be mm -hmm. gossip between them it's like eh, so uh, how is how is the uh, Harper administration treating you now? Ah, uh, don't care. I, I I still do my shipments and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so so I would I would think that uh, the whole uh, network that uh, uh, that Trista and Max is uh, built up back in the day and probably uh, several of their friends whom we haven't uh, addressed. So the network still works, the network still sort of functions on its own and uh, and uh, I think it is through this network that uh, Scribe and Nali will be able to uh, sort of get the signal out that uh, we need to talk. Mm -hmm. so Very cool! So, so this would also sort of uh, foreshadow the uh, 
the eventual uh, the eventual cause uh, for the hop partners is that they will in the end uh, jewel will uh, grant uh, them more independence or, or like grant them partnership because mm -hmm. de facto they are already operating as as independent units that work together rather than uh, taking commands from from yeah, a thing yeah. so so it is uh, i think the uh, the whole reason why this why this network uh, works and why it keeps functioning is because all the individual cells or, or the individual smaller organizations within it uh, actually are able to function on their own it's it just that they have chosen to align with the hoppers uh, but yeah so this is the contact point or this the, this is the huh? <laughs> 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 Sorry, continue. And you didn't even have to pull any nose hairs. <laughs> yeah, man. So, up, so, it snuck up on me. So, yeah, so this uh, uh, shadow support of Harpers is the network that Nolly and, and Scribe run into when trying to track down or when trying to uh, get a word around the city. Mm -hmm. um, the way it sounds is uh, they're not even sure if they're looking for Fortune or Jewel at this point. Yeah, they just want to speak to a Harper. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would keep it a, a bit of uh, open, open thing here. So like they they know that they need to find a a harbor, but they don't they don't know much about it. And I got the idea that uh, it could be that they are trying to uh, they are trying to find a local information peddler. Of course, because this is uh, this is a whole different uh, cultural sphere than the mm -hmm. uh, than the up upper worlds or whatever we shall call them. Uh, I think it is too much to hope or too much to assume that an actual uh, Svalbard bard is, is present in any of the dive bars here, but the info peddler or, or like a data snitch uh, function would still be active. So basically, uh, I, I would try. So from Scri Scribe's perspective, I would try to find a colleague or try to find somebody who trades in information and uh, then Nali can keep his eye out on uh, how to pay for that service or like what you might need. Like, looks, mm -hmm. look, looks, looks, like, uh, looks like your eye needs calibrating. <laughs> I can do that for you. <laughs> Yeah, that's a pretty cool touch.
of street cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard it a little bit that time, but it's all good. Yeah, I think when I turn my head, then the mic picks it up. Right, so what we have so far is that Nali and Scribe make it to our Chaos 4 somehow. They will mm -hmm. make it to the city where the Harpers live somehow. <laughs> How come? <laughs> Unexplained. <laughs> oh, no. Unknown. <laughs> Wait, what's uh, not unknown? What's what's the word he uses? Unclear. I don't know. Oh, oh yeah, unclear. yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> that works. <laughs> <laughs> How did he get there? Unclear. I that works. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they they will uh, uh, they will make it uh, deep inside the city and they will meet up uh, in a uh, in in a bar of course because mm -hmm. uh, that's just how things go oh yeah it's, it is a trope that works i shall invoke it <laughs> so yeah they they shall walk into a bar seek information uh, Try to buy slash uh, peddle information from a uh, from one of those uh, vagabond scribes, <laughs> who probab who is probably from a different scribe order than uh, than our scribe. Mm -hmm. uh, then I I would think that they don't get the information. So again, this is very. This sounds very tropey, but uh, uh, let's just go with it for a moment. So uh, they don't necessarily get the info that they need from from this uh, person, but uh, but somebody else, but but the Hopper Network has overheard and like, what do you need or what do you want mm -hmm. of the Hoppers? And there should also be the point that at this at this time, the Harbour House security has been greatly amped up. Oh so, yeah. So that uh, you can't just uh, I don't know fly in and park on the front lawn. Uh, by the way, uh, this is something that we didn't address uh, in Sega. Uh, and eventually I, I just I, I figured that there is a system that works we just don't mention it but like uh, when it comes to those higher rise terraces and higher rise uh, residences then there has to be some sort of uh, protection work uh, protection network or protection system that uh, prevents uh, somebody with hostile intent just flying in from above and mm -hmm. and, and dropping into uh, inside a territory. So uh, we could mention something like that uh, here. And uh, I'm not certain what exactly might it be, but it, it might be some sort of uh, invisible barrier, uh, like I don't know, some mm. magnetic zone uh, above. Uh, when uh, Raptor and Jewel take off in uh, in the glider, then we did mention something called free fly zone uh, between the city. Uh, do that. So it might be that above the uh, the residences, there there are certain restrictions for flying, mm -hmm. but those restrictions are enforced by something physical. <coughs> or yeah, maybe I'm, I'm I don't. Glad I, you suggested a sort of invisible force field because uh, shooting them out of the sky probably isn't the best option. No. 
it's, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's more it's more like some sort of micro micro mesh or or indeed like some magnetic uh, a cloud of magnetic particles that doesn't block the light but uh, uh, but prevents uh, anything electronic from entering which of course mm. leaves things mm. vulnerable for uh, for non-electronic, I don't know, gliders and such. But yeah, so uh, leaving it open for the moment, but there has to be some sort of some sort of system. Oh my god! What if? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, in, a, in a future story, somewhere down the line, um, uh, maybe in the quiet times maybe the crew have got to get into one of these one of these areas that's got this protection over the top of it and they know that electronics are going to fail so instead they take gliders to go through man there's a yeah there yeah but this story. is but this is something that somebody would have thought of uh, mm -hmm. pretty much right away so uh, so the the sky protection thing has to work uh, against electronics as well as against meat sacks uh, from the start. <laughs> mm. there, could, there could be something... Uh, I could work something out here. Possibly. Yeah, but, we'll uh, find out when we get to the quiet times, which is scheduled for 2027, so check back uh, then. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's it's not that far ahead, <laughs> uh, but yeah, but 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 yeah. So whatever whatever the protective system is, the assumption is that it works, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, and that it and at the same time it is unobtrusive to the people on the ground. Mm -hmm. And since since we since we have all sorts of smart materials and and smart signals going on, uh, I, I I would think that it is it is just a matter of uh, of describing it well. It's uh, it's it's not it's not something something hugely. Uh, it's not a danger of plot hole. We just have to address it. So is this situation not, not um, sort of concluded now? Because I imagine the next point would be that Scribe and Gnarly, hang on, where is it? Meet Jewel. Uh, well, it is not concluded because when uh, when the uh, Hopper Shadow Network uh, gets alerted that, that these guys are asking around, uh, then... Uh, what should follow is suspicion and capture. So it's like, so what do you want? What what do you want from the hoppers? Uh, so uh, from their perspective, yes, they have arrived and they have uh, they have reached uh, some seedy bar in the underbelly of the city. But uh, how they will actually encounter uh, Jewel? Uh, is still open, and uh, I am partial to uh, Jewel and maybe maybe some crew coming down to the streets, so 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 that the discussion should uh, uh, should happen in the streets mm -hmm. somewhere, like in a in a safe place, safe bar. <laughs> Or like a very very public bar, probably with noodles, as you do. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> so at at the moment, I'm getting uh, I'm getting flashes of all all the uh, retro cyberpunk tropes here, mm -hmm. like visual tropes, neon signs, and and noodles. <laughs> yeah, man. I will write this down. And this would make a good band name as well. <laughs> Add it to the list. Or or a song name about uh, about very retro cyberpunk thing. 
but and I, I I want to make this very clear I don't want to actually invoke like I, I don't want to go full on 80 cyberpunk on this it's, no, it's, it's just it's no. just more it's, it's more of a nod it's more of a recognition yeah. that yes we are influenced by by this imagery uh, mm -hmm. and now we are moving on <laughs> but yes uh, let's let's write this down so shadow network think that in order for Jewel to actually go to a meeting somebody has to set up that meeting beforehand and in order to set up the meeting that somebody has to be convinced that uh, there is there is reason to uh, there is reason to talk or like so so there is a whole other interaction there the guys will have mm -hmm. to make a good case that they they really need to talk to somebody about <laughs> this thing can they make a good case i would probably not believe someone if they came to me and said right i found this list on a robot that came out of the void cloud uh, and your name is on this list th th yeah this is this would not be a good way to approach no. this <laughs> uh, no. they no I, I would think that this is uh this is scribes business to uh present some evidence convincingly and, uh, and imply that uh, and, and explain that they have reason to believe that there is danger instead of oh we flew here from from the <laughs> junkyard and we found the robot and the robot had uh, had some data in it and it's super cool <laughs> so, so yeah <laughs> not that <laughs> Oh really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Super easy. <laughs> <laughs> Barely an inconvenience. The guys will have convinced some contact person that they have info that is worth. A meeting. Scribe's job to present convincing evidence. Yes. Uh, so so yes, uh, the resolution for this situation. Uh, is when the actual uh, meeting takes place From from there on, the uh, dual versus host hopper dynamic shall kick in, and and uh, and uh, she will either try to respond to this core to adventure, or, mm -hmm. or 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 deny it or whatever. There might, there might be something uh, to speed up uh, the 
the decision making here so maybe uh, maybe some alarming news from somewhere so I, I again I, I, I wouldn't want to bring in like full frontal attacks at this point but uh, mm -hmm. but uh, but but some some uneasy news about something like a shipment was intercepted or, or like I don't know uh, we haven't heard from our da -da 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 for a long time that 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 sort of thing maybe so so yeah so so there is some fluff here and there is a lot of this is is open and i think a lot of this situation will remain open until we have actually worked out the previous steps because this this uh uh since here the three threads uh should come together a lot of it uh, depends on on what happens before i think that's my problem here the reason i haven't contributed so much is i've got less understanding mm. about this situation and i'm mm. sort of just watching you form it um, <laughs> yeah but uh, i think that's that's where i will leave it right now so i will leave these open questions here Mm -hmm. and and the sort of uh, so we do have a location that uh, uh, I, I think uh, the location of the city underbelly and our sort of uh, shelter and con connection uh, will be the basis for this situation and the things that actually happen can vary a lot and who exactly get involved can also vary a lot Mm -hmm. We just know that this situation is the final nudge that takes uh, the guys and and you will into collision. Yeah, man. Nice work. <laughs> oh, not bad for a foggy morning. <laughs> right. So, uh, I shall wrap up this recording here. Yeah. Uh, Thank you very much for watching. Yes, I might uh I might link the Pinterest boards under this video to go with the discussion. Fancy. So <laughs> yes. Uh, uh thank you very much for watching. I am stopping recording now.